Hi friends, this is Naresh. This is my seventh lecture on mission drawing subject. This is uh, common for uh, second year B.Tech and second year diploma mechanical students. Okay. In this session, I am going to explain about how to draw the other forms of uh, bolts, nuts, and uh, screws. In this session, I will explain about these uh, three topics. Okay. Now, uh, right. okay. first one is a square headed bolt with a square neck. Okay, this is the first one. Uh, this is another form of uh, bolt. Okay, it is uh, provided with a square neck which fits into a corresponding square hole in the adjacent part, preventing the rotation of the bolt. Okay. Here you can observe here this is a bolt bolt shaft this is a square square neck okay and also uh, this bolt having a square head okay this is a square head this is a square neck this is a shaft okay so this uh, in this in this bolt is provided with a square neck square neck which fits into a corresponding square hole, square hole in the adjacent part preventing the rotation of the bolt. Okay. So this is the orthographic view that is the front view and side view. This is the isometric view. In this uh, class, I will explain how to draw these uh, two views that is the front view and side view. I will explain here. Okay. First of all, I am going to draw a side view, side view of uh, this uh, figure. So, here I am drawing a horizontal line. The This length is equal to width, that is a 2D plus 3mm, that is the width of a head, okay. This is a square head, okay, that's why the height and uh, width both are equal. So, width equal to 1.5D. Sorry, 1.5D plus 3mm. Okay, here 1.5D plus uh, 3mm is the width. Okay. And height also 1.5D plus 3mm. Okay, width equal to 1.5D plus 3mm and height equal to 1.5D plus 3mm. So, so draw vertical lines on the horizontal lines. This is a square, square having side W, W equal to 1.5D plus 3mm, okay. This, uh, this is the outside uh, square, okay, square. Then after I am going to draw a, this uh, square neck and uh, circular shaft, okay. Here you can observe here, from, if you are, if you are observing from this side, the side view of this uh, board is looks like a, a square. This one is a square. Then after this one is also a square, square neck, and this one is a, a circle. So you have to draw a circle at the center of the square. So that's why I am drawing axis lines. This is the center of the square. Okay, by using this center point. I am drawing a circle. Okay, this is this circle is a shaft diameter. Okay, that is a screw screw diameter. That is a D. Okay, this is the diameter of the screw. Okay. Then after you have to draw a, a square square neck. This is square neck having a size uh, having side side equal to diameter D. So. So this is the square neck, square neck having a diameter length D, okay. Each side equal to D, 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 okay. Here yeah, this one is 1.5D, 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 1.5D. So this is the complete view of a side view, okay. The, I completed this side view, okay. Then after I am going to draw the front view of this uh, figure. So that's why I am projecting all lines in left side direction. So here each corner is projected like this, okay. Here are these two points, here this one and this one, these two corners. 
coincide with a single line and these two corners coincide with a single line okay so uh, if you are observing from this side this length is projected as a front view so this is the height of a front view and you have to consider a width of the nut the, the width of this nut equal to 0.8 d so draw a horizontal line this uh, length equal to 0.8 d okay this is the width of this uh, square head okay and draw a vertical line this is the complete shape of a square okay this is uh, sorry this is a shape of a rectangle if you are observing from this side this side is uh, looks like a rectangle okay so the dimension horizontal length equal 0 0.80 and height equal to width that is about 1.5d plus 3mm okay height equal 1.5d plus 3mm width equal to 0 0.80 okay then after you have to draw this uh, square square neck okay the dimension of this square neck is equal to the this uh, size that is d okay so the height equal to d and width equal to 0 0.8 d okay so first of all you have to draw a this is a shaft okay so the shaft having outer diameter d okay so now i am marking uh, this uh, two diagonal lines it is the representation of a square okay so this is the conventional representation of a square and this arc this arc is a chamfering radius okay here the chamfering radius r equal to 2d okay by using compass take radius r equal to 2d and uh, place a compass on this uh, center line okay then after we have to draw a uh, arc like like this okay so this is the chamfering arc then after we have to draw a these uh, two diagonal lines the width equal to 0 0.80 that means uh, the the width of this square neck equal to 0 0.8 d so from here to here the length is 0 0.8 d so this is the square neck okay then after you have to draw a diagonal lines to represent the square okay So this is the complete answer for a square headed bolt with a square neck okay. So you can observe here first you have to draw this side view of uh, this figure. So this uh, circle this one and this square neck is uh, this one and this outside square head equal to this one okay. Then after drawing the side view, you have to project all corners into left side direction. Then you have to draw a head. This is a square head. Square head having a width equal to 0 0.8D and height equal to W. Okay. And uh, take a suitable length. Okay. It is not a fixed length. Okay. Take any length. Okay it depends upon our requirement okay the length of the this bolt depends upon the our requirement so just uh, draw a horizontal length okay so now these two diagonal lines indicate represents the convention representation of a square okay so this is the answer for this uh, square headed bolt with a square neck Now the second model is uh, T capital T T headed bolt with square neck. Okay, here the bolt is in a T shape. Okay, that's why the name uh, is uh, is called T headed bolt with square neck. Okay, here you can observe here. This is the isometric view of the T headed bolt with the square neck. These two are the orthographic views of the T-headed board with the square neck. Okay. These are the orthographic views. This is front view. This is side view. This is the isometric view. Okay. And the purpose of uh, this T-headed board is same as uh, previous one. 
okay in this uh, t hundred board with the square neck a square neck provided this one is a square neck square neck is uh, square, square neck provided below the head okay this is the head okay uh, below the head prevents the rotation of the bolt this type of bolt is used for fixing vices okay fixing vices means uh, carpentry vices uh, fitting vices okay and work pieces like this to the mission table having t slots okay so now i am going to explain how to draw the orthographic views of uh, this uh, square this t headed bolt with a square neck okay first of all you have to observe from this side if you want to draw the side view of this uh, this figure you have to observe from this side then uh, first this circle is a projector on the side view so this is the side view of the this figure so in this side view this circle is projected so that uh, this is the diameter diameter of the screw so this is capital t and this is the square neck the square neck also having the side d okay then after this is the t head so this t head having a height 1.8 d so from here to here from top to bottom the height is 1.8 d okay so first you have to draw this uh, side view that's for that side view i am drawing a horizontal line okay this uh, horizontal line length is equal to the this length okay this length from here to here this length is uh, horizontal length so this horizontal length is equal to the diameter of the this bolt okay so this is a capital d okay so and then after you have to draw a vertical line the height of this t headed bolt equal 1.8 d so from here to here we have to draw a vertical line the height of vertical line equal 1.8 d so this is the rectangle okay if you are observing from this side this uh, t shape t head is looks like a rectangle so this width w equal to d and height equal to 1.8 d these are the dimensions for t head then after we have to draw a square square with the circle so first of all mark a center center point okay this is the center point of uh, this square this uh, rectangle center point of uh, this rectangle by using this center point we have to draw a circle okay the diameter of this circle equal to d okay that means we have to take a radius r equal to d by 2 take compass take radius r equal to d by 2 okay then after you have to draw a uh, square okay so this is a square neck okay now i completed the side view of the t headed uh, bolt with the square neck then after you have to project each corner into left side okay so the height of uh, this front view also same as uh, this height so that is the height of front view equal to 1.8 d okay so if you are observing from this side if you are observing from this side this is the front view of uh, this figure so first you have to draw this vertical line the, uh, the height of this vertical line equal to 1.8 d so this 1.8 d is equal to the side view 1.8 d okay then after you have to draw this horizon line this bottom and the top horizon line the length of this horizon line is equal to 0 0.8 d okay similarly draw a horizon line at bottom of the figure and join these two horizon lines okay this is the small line okay this one so draw a projection line from here okay then after you have to draw the this uh, shaft okay this edge and uh, this uh, shaft looks like a straight line okay this is the diameter then after you have to draw this uh, horizontal length horizontal line for indicating the square neck the width of square neck is also length equal to 0 0.8 d okay so this is the t shape okay here if you this is a square so that's why you have to represent a conventional way it looks like as uh, diagonal lines okay 
Great. This is the complete answer for uh, this uh, figure. He had a bolt with a square neck. Now I am going to explain about uh, hook bolt. This is a hook bolt. Uh, this uh, bolt passes through a hole in one part only, while the other part is uh, gripped by the hook shaped bolt head. Okay. So this is the gripped, uh, gripped by the hook shaped bolt head. Okay. Hook shaped bolt head. It is used where there is no space for making a bolt hole in one of the parts. Okay. The square neck prevents the rotation of the bolt. Okay. This is uh, also square neck and this is the uh, hook. Okay. This one is the bolt shaft. Okay. Bolt. This is a bolt. Okay. This is the front view of uh, this figure. This is the side view of this figure. Okay, if you want to observe, if you want to draw the front view, you have to observe from this side. Similarly, if you want to draw your side view, then you have to observe from this side. Okay, if you are observing from this side, this circle and this square cross section uh, project on the side view, and this top uh, rectangle also project on the side view. So this is the side view of this figure. So first you have to draw a, a side view. So that's why I am drawing a axis line horizontal and vertical axis line for marking the center point then after I am drawing a circle the diameter of a circle equal to this uh, this uh, shaft diameter that is a D okay now then after uh, I am drawing a this rectangular box okay the height of this box equal to 0 1.8 D 1.8 D is the height this is the a closed uh, square okay this, each side is a d horizontal distance is d and vertical height is also d okay then after you have to extend the lines in upward direction okay this is the shape of a uh, rectangle okay so uh, this outside rectangle having height 1.8 1.8 d and the width equal to d okay so this is the side view then after you have to project the each points in uh, left side direction like this okay now then after you have to draw these lines okay first you have to draw these lines so this is the length of uh, 0.8 t this is a 0.8 t sorry Okay, this uh, here from here to here, this line is equal to this line. Okay, and uh, this uh, horizontal line is uh, this one, and this bottom horizontal line is this one. Okay, then after uh, here, this is the diameter of a shaft, the diameter of a bolt. Okay, this is a square neck, so the length of this square neck will equal to 0 0.8 d. Okay, now then after you have to draw a diagonal lines for representing the square. Okay, now for uh, if you want to draw this, uh, this curve, take uh, radius r equal to 0 0.90. Okay, the total uh, diameter equal to 1.8 d, that is the total height, total height equal to 1.8 d. So you have to consider the uh, radius r equal to 0 0.90 okay take center point here here the distance between this point and bottom point is equal to 0 0.90 and also the distance between this point and the top point is equal to 0 0.90 okay so uh, by using this point uh, you take radius r equal to 0 0.9 d and uh, draw a semicircle okay here you have to draw a semicircle like this okay this is the answer for uh, hook bolt okay so here first of all you have to draw a circle in the side view then after you you have to draw a closed uh, square okay then after you have to draw a closed rectangle okay this is the side view then after you have to extend all these points in the left side direction okay 
then after you have to draw the shop size okay this this is the bolt okay so now this is the semicircle uh, this semicircle represents the hook okay so you can observe from here uh, here if you want to draw the front view you have to observe from this side so uh, the shape of this front view equal to looks like a semicircle okay so this is the complete answer for uh, hook bolt this is very important uh, diagram in uh, exam point of view okay now the fourth one is uh, eye bolt this is the shape of a here you can observe here this is a eye bolt okay this one is a small eye bolt this one is a bigger eye bolt so this uh, eye bolt you have to draw the front view and the side view of uh, this eye bolt okay in order to facilitate lifting of a heavy machinery like electric generators motors turbines like this like that uh, eye bolts are screwed on to their top surfaces for fitting any for fitting an eye bolt a tapped hole is uh, provided above the center of uh, gravity of the machine okay uh, now i am drawing this side view and the front view of uh, this eye bolt first you have to draw the this inside circle okay first you have to draw a inside circle so that's why i'm drawing a inside circle okay this one this circle is represents uh, this inside circle the size of this inside circle equal 1.5d okay then after you have to draw this outside circle okay so the thickness of uh, this circle is equal to 0.8d okay the thickness of this uh, circle equal 0.8d so take a compass uh, draw a another circle like this okay the outer diameter the outer diameter equal to 1.5d plus uh, 0.8d plus 0.8d that is a 3.1 the total diameter of outside uh, circle equal to 3.1d okay 3.1d okay 3.1d is the outside diameter of the eye bolt okay so I completed this uh, top, uh, top view, so top surfaces, then after you have to draw this bottom surface, okay, this bottom uh, shaft having uh, screws, okay, so this one is uh, neck, okay, so you have to draw this, uh, this base, okay, first you have to draw this base, okay, it is at, uh, the base lies at a distance of uh, 2D from the center point so this is the this one base this base looks like a rectangle the thickness of uh, the width of this uh, base equal to 2d and height equal to 0.4d okay this thickness this thickness equal 0.4d then after you have to draw the arcs okay so these two arcs represents uh, these two okay then after you have to draw this uh, shaft, this bolt, the diameter of this bolt equal to capital D. Okay, so take half of the diameter uh, from here to here, take 0.5D and from here to here, take 0.5D. Okay, now here you can observe here, this uh, internal two lines indicates uh, threading okay so this is the front view front view of uh, this eye bolt then after uh, i am drawing the side view side view of uh, this eye bolt okay if you are observing from this side okay this uh, these two circles looks like a rectangle so and the bottom from the from the base to from the base to bolt the view is same in front view and the side view. So you have to repeat the these two these two steps. Now I am repeating the these bottom two steps. Okay, two D and height equal to zero point four D, and this is the shaft. Okay, 
and these are the threading lines okay so the bottom the bottom base is same as the front view and top view and then after you have to draw the uh, side view of uh, this ring okay so the thickness of uh, this two surface is equal to 0 0.8 d so take 0 0.8 d as the gap between these two vertical lines okay so here take uh, height of these two vertical lines as uh, as like this now here you can observe here this is the side view side view of uh, this eye board okay the side view of uh, eye board looks like a uh, this uh, single rectangle okay So this is the complete view uh, are yeah. here. Now I am showing the application of uh, this eye bolt. So here yeah, this is the base. Uh, this, this is a workpiece. Okay. So you uh, yeah, this work this one also workpiece. Okay, this is the application of uh, eye bolt. Okay. Now I am going to explain about the studs. Okay, stud or stud bolt. How to draw the stud or stud bolt? This is the original shape of a stud. So the conventional representation of uh, this stud is looks like a shaft. Okay, so this is the outside diameter of the shaft. Okay, so this is the front view of the shaft. This is the top view of the shaft. Okay, now take uh, this middle section as a rectangle okay there is no threading between this uh, rectangle okay and for representing the actual thread you have to draw the uh, vertical lines like this this these vertical lines represents threading okay now the outside circle represent as a, this circle uh, whereas uh, the diameter of this threads thread circle also represent as a circle but it is an incomplete circle okay the diameter of the threads uh, you have to draw the diameter of the circle as an incomplete circle okay so this is the a view of uh, this is the uh, view of orthographic view of uh, this stud okay this is the front view this is the top view of this mat so here I I will show the application of uh, this stud. Stud consists of a cylindrical shank. Okay, this is called a shank or a shaft or body with threads cut on both the ends. Okay, threads cut on both the ends. It is used where where there is no place for accommodating the bolt head or when one of the parts to be joined is too thick to use an ordinary bolt okay the stud is first screwed into the one of the two parts to be joined usually the thicker one okay a stud driver in the form of a thick hexagonal nut with a blind threaded hole is used for the purpose after placing the second part over the stud, a nut is screwed on the over the nut head, nut end. It is usual to provide in the second part a hole which is slightly larger than the stud nominal diameter. Okay. So here I will show the application. Here these are two are the uh, different uh, specimens, different work pieces. So this top work piece uh, is a thin plate. Okay and this bottom plate is a thick plate okay if you want to join these two work pieces first you have to to drill these uh, two plates looks like this okay this is the hole okay so by using a drilling machine you have to make a drill on these two work pieces okay now then after you have to insert these this, this uh, stud this stud okay 
so now i am drawing this chart diagram similar same uh, answer repeat same answer for uh, here okay this is the stud after inserting the stud you have to you have to assemble the nut at the top of uh, this plate okay to join these two plates first you have to drill then after drilling you have to assemble a stud okay after assembling the stud you have to assemble a nut at the top of the plate okay so now i am drawing the nut hexagonal nut so this is the hexagonal nut here the height of this nut equal to d and the width of this nut equal to 2d okay already we have discussed in uh, previous classes how to draw a hexagonal nut okay so this is the hexagonal nut now i am showing the other forms of nuts okay first one is a flanged nut this is a hexagonal this is a hexagonal nut okay this flanged nut is a hexagonal nut uh, with a collar this bottom uh, surface is called a collar or flange provided internal integral with it this uh, this permits the use of bolt in a comparatively large size hole okay this is the actual shape of a flanger nut okay this is the orthographic view of this flanger nut okay and this one is another type that is cap cap nut okay it is a hexagonal nut okay this shape also hexagonal nut with a cylindrical cap okay here a cylindrical cap at the top okay this design protects the end of the bolt from corrosion and also prevents uh, leakage through the threads okay cap nuts are used in smoke boxes or locomotive and steam pipe connections okay this is the original view of the cap nut okay this is isometric view this one is the orthographic view of cap nut okay now another type is a dome nut okay it is another form of a cap nut having a spherical dome spherical dome at the top okay this is the spherical dome at the top and the bottom shape having a hexagonal shape you can observe here this is a hexagonal shape okay at the base uh, there is a threading okay internal threading so this is the orthographic view of a dome nut this is the isometric view of a dome nut okay now capstan nut this is the isometric view of a capstan nut so this is the isometric view of a capstan nut these two are the front view and top view of the capstan nut okay so this capstan nut is a cylindrical in shape Uh, with the holes uh, dr drilled laterally in the curved surface a tommy bar may be used in the holes for turning the nut okay holes may also be drilled in the upper flat face of the nut okay so this capstan nut is in a cylindrical shape okay so these are the front view and this this one is the top view of this capstan nut and this one is a, a ring nut okay this is the isometric view of the ring nut this is the top view and front view of the ring nut okay this nut is in the form of a ring with the slots in the curved surface running parallel to the axis a special c spanner is used to operate the nut these nuts are used on large large screws where the use of ordinary span is uh, inconvenient okay so this is the isometric view of a ring nut okay these are the orthographic views of a ring nut this is the front view this is the top view okay 
this is a last uh, pipe so this is a wing nut this nut is used when frequent removal is required such as inspection covers lids okay like this it is uh, operated by the thumb okay so this is the isometric view of uh, wing nut these two are the orthographic views of the wing nut this is the front view this is the top view okay now this one is uh, set screws these are used to prevent relative motion between uh, two rotating parts such as the movement of a pulley on shop for this a set screw is screwed into the pulley hub so that its end point bears firmly against the shaft the fastening action is uh, by friction between the screw and the shaft set screws are not efficient and so are used only for uh, transmitting very light loads for longer life set screws are made of steel and case hardened further the better results the shaft surface is uh, suitably machined for providing more grip eliminating any slipping any slipping tendency okay these are the different types of uh, set screws okay so here you can observe here. i i will explain here cap screws cap screws and mission screws cap screws and mission screws are similar in in shape differing only in their relative sizes mission screws are usually smaller in size compared to cap screws these are used for fastening two parts one with clearance hole and other with tapped hole the clearance of the unthreaded hole need not be shown on the drawings as its uh, presence is ob obvious figure shows different types of cap and mission screws with the proportions marked cap screws are produced in uh, finished form or used on missions where accuracy and uh, appearance are important as cap screws are uh, inferior to studs they are used only and only on missions requiring few adjustments and are not suitable where frequent removal is necessary these are uh, produced in different diameters up to a maximum of uh, 100 mm and lens 250 mm okay mission screws are produced with a naturally bright finish and are not heat treated they are particularly adapted for screwing into thin materials and the smaller ones are threaded throughout the length they are used in uh, fire arms jigs fixtures and dies they are produced in different diameters up to maximum of 20 mm and lens up to 50 mm okay so these are the different types of mission cap mission screws and cap screws i will show the three dimensional views here this is a hexagonal head hexagonal headed screw okay this is the assembled view here two uh, two work pieces are joined joined by using hexagonal headed screw okay this is the isometric view of a hexagonal headed screw okay now this one is a flat headed screw okay this is the assembled view of a flat headed screw okay this is the isometric view of the flat headed screw and this one is a round headed uh, screw here the top surface looks like a round okay so this is the assembled view of a round headed screw okay this is the application of uh, this screw and these are uh, cheese head screw okay these are uh, cheese head screws these are the different sizes in uh, cheese head screws and this is the assembled view of uh, cheese head screw okay this is the isometric view of the head screw this one is a oval head oval head screw okay uh, this is the assembled view of a oval head screw this is the isometric view of a oval head screw and this one is a isometric view of a socket head screw okay this one is a socket head screw this is the assembled view of a socket head screw okay these are the examples for a locking nuts locking by split pin 
castle nut okay these are the examples for a locking arrangements these are the foundation bolts this one is i foundation bolt this one is a bent foundation bolt okay so these are already discussed in the previous uh, the different forms of uh, nuts and bolts screws okay so okay okay friends uh, this is the last topic in uh, fastness screw fastness okay this is the last topic in uh, screw fastness okay in next class i will explain about uh, keys and uh, i will explain about uh, different types of keys and application of keys and the function of a key and the different types of uh, keys how to draw the their shapes i will explain in uh, next class okay okay friends thank you This is a lock nut. Okay. Okay.